Hey, and welcome to my channel. My name's Nick, and I teach Python and data science tutorials here and at my website. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon to be notified of brand new videos just like this one. Today we'll be talking about pandas pivot tables, one of the key functions required for data analysis. Let's get started. Before we dive in, let's explore why you would even want to create a pivot table. Now you've probably been given such massive Excel spreadsheets that contain just a jumble of different numbers on them. Pivot tables allow you to quickly and easily summarize this data and group different variables into different columns and rows to be able to gain meaningful insight from this data. Pandas makes it incredibly easy to generate these pivot tables using almost plain language words within the arguments of the function. Let's dive right in and explore what the function actually looks like. All right, let's take a look at the function here. You can see right off the bat that there's a ton of different arguments within the function. So to begin with, we'll start off just by looking at some of the more basic ones. The first one here is the data argument, where you will write in the name of the data frame that you want to pivot. This is followed by values. This represents the actual values that you want to summarize using the pivot table function. And finally, we have index. You can think of index similar to the rows field within Excel pivot tables. Okay, let's get started and write some code. I've already written a little bit of code here. We'll begin by importing the pandas library. So let's run that. After that, I've provided a uh, data set that's available for download at this URL if you want to follow along with the tutorial. We're going to load that into a data frame that we'll call df here using the read Excel function. So I'm going to run this and we'll have created our first data frame. Before we dive into creating a pivot table, let's actually take a look at what the data set looks like to see what we'll be working with. We can print out the first few rows of our data set by using the head function. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see here that we have five different columns. The first one is the date column, uh, a region field, a type field, a units field, as well as a sales field. So imagine that this data set represents different transactions that occur throughout a day. And each day is also further categorized by a region in which that transaction occurred, as well as the type of transaction that it included. So Let's actually dive into creating our pivot tables. We'll start off by just writing a very simple pivot table function. We'll create a new object called pivot1 and we'll put in our pivot table function and a few arguments to start off. So you can use the data argument and specify which data frame you actually want to draw from. But as it's positionally the first argument, you can also just write df. So let's do that just to save some time. We'll want to add an index to this. So let's add an index of region. What this means is that the region column will become the rows if you're familiar with Excel pivot tables. So if we print this out now, let's see what we get. We can see here that we have two columns, sales and units. The reason why we have only two and not five is because the pandas pivot table function can only generate meaningful statistics from numerical columns. As these are dates and these two here are strings, it's not going to summarize that for us. So let's say, however, we were only interested in actually pulling out the values for the sales column. We can do that by specifying the values argument. So let's assign another pivot table called pivot2. In it, we'll use the pivot table function just like before. We'll use the same argument df as the data argument. Our index will still be region. And this time we'll add a third argument, the values argument, which will be sales. Now when we print out pivot2, will only include our aggregation for the sales column. So you can see here that the units column isn't present because we've specified the values argument here. Okay, so we've covered off a few basic examples with pandas pivot tables, but earlier I showed you a ton of different arguments that are available within the function. Let's now take a closer look at what these arguments can do for you. Now you might be wondering what this data actually represents. 
You might recall from our earlier overview of what the function values actually include, the default argument for the agfunc parameter is mean. So all of these are the average sales price for each transaction within that column broken out by a region. But what if we wanted to know, say, the sum of all total sales? Well, then we can specify the agfunc argument directly. Let's create a new pivot table called pivot3, where we'll actually add up all the sales values to generate a total sales sum. You can do this by assigning pivot3 to pd.pivottable. And similar to before, we'll use our df as our data argument. We'll use region as our index. We'll use sales as our values. And now we'll add another parameter here called agfunc. This either takes a single value or a list of values, as we'll explore in just a moment. So here we'll write sum. Now when we print out pivot 3, we can see that the values here are the sum of all the sales values broken up by region, whereas before when we didn't specify a particular argument, it returned the mean value. Okay. Now say we wanted to add both the average sale price but also the total value of sale prices. Within the agfunc argument, you can specify a list of different methods that you want to calculate on. So what we can do here is simply change this to a list of values and then we can include sum and mean. Now when we print this out, we'll notice that we have two columns. We have the sum, which is the total sales value sum, as well as mean, which includes the mean values as before. Now, what if we wanted to cover off columns within this as well? If we wanted to break the data out both by region, but also by type of sale that happened. Let's see how we can do this using the columns argument. We'll create pivot four here and use a very similar structure to what we're used to by now. So we'll use data equals DF, index equals region, and we'll add a new argument called columns where we'll add type. And again, for values, we'll use sales. Now, when we print out pivot four, we can see here that the data has been further broken out by the type field and it's spread out across columns. Another very useful feature in pandas pivot tables is the ability to add in column and row totals. We can do this by using the margins argument. Say, for example, we wanted to know the total sales that occurred across each region, as well as across the different types of clothing that were sold within the different categories. We can create a new pivot table, which we'll call pivot six. Our function will look quite similar to what we had before, where we'll specify data equals DF. Our index will still be region. Our columns will still be type. For values, we'll specify sales. For the aggregation function, here we'll use sum to be able to tally them up. And now we'll add one final parameter, margins equals true. Now when we print this out, we can see here that a new column and a new row with the headings all have been added. Now what if we wanted to call this something like total? We can use the argument called margins name equals total. Now when we rerun this, the word all will have been replaced with total. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you learned a lot and that you're more comfortable creating pivot tables within pandas. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to be notified of new videos just like this one, hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon beside it to be notified. If you have any questions about Pandas Pivot Tables, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.